I'm Opti GPU. And I'm the low profile version. And this is the GTX 1650. It's five years old now, which is really old. But it's still the preferred gaming card of many a gamer, especially the ones that are installing them into old Optiplex computers like we're going to do today. This card was released on April 1st, 2020. It has a base clock of 1410, a boost clock of 1620, 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and 896 CUDA cores. NVIDIA stopped producing chips for the GTX 16 series cards at the beginning of this year, and they're basically by now sold out everywhere, so I'd be interested to see what that starts doing to the price. All right, we're going to open up this baby. Yeah, old baby. It's a five-year-old baby. So inside here, this has already been opened because I bought it used. You can get these things for $135 used on eBay now. That's what I paid for this. And we're going to check the damages. It actually looks practically brand new. It's got all the... Still has all the little port covers. Yeah, this thing looks practically new. So we're going to get these things off and put it in there. Check this out. A little light show. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Hey, LP, tell us about the ports. I'd love to. This is a very old DVI port. This is a display port for some reason. But what we're going to use is one of these HDMI ports. What we're running in this Dell is an i7-3770, a 240-watt power supply, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 256-gigabyte SSD. We're going to do something crazy today. We're going to actually install this graphics card with our Optiplex standing up, just so you can see it better. Really, it's just I don't want to put the camera on the ceiling. So, opening this out of the way, take its shoe off. Now we need to plug it directly down. We've already got this bracket out of the way. We're going to plug it directly into the 16x slot. That's this blue slot right here. It's too fat to plug it into the 8x slot, and we wouldn't want to put it there anyway. Man, is this thing too long? Oh, you know what? Ha! Rookie mistake. I haven't taken off the standard height bracket. I need to put the low profile bracket on this thing. So I have my J1 Phillips head screwdriver right here. And we're going to speed this part up so that you don't have to uh, endure this. All right, we're going to do something crazy today. We're going to actually install this with the Dell Tower actually standing up. I don't even know if I can do this. I've never done it before, but here goes nothing. I'm going to plug it directly down into the blue, making sure we've got the cords out of the way. Oh, almost forgot. I get this off of it. All right, here we go. No wonder it wasn't going in there. As I said, I have never done it this way before. There we go. And it's in. I think. Yep, it's in. All right, now we're going to run Furmark to really stress this graphics card out. There, take that graphics card. Welcome to heck. All right, it looks like it's pulling 64, 66 watts total, even in heck. I'm going into some testing now with 3D Mark's Time Spy, it scored a 3505, which is just barely better than the average. The best score given to this graphics card and this processor was a 4132. So it's falling down to around the average score. And as you can see, here is the system information and the detailed monitor. Now into 3D Mark's Firestrike, we scored an 8151, 
The average has been 7798 with the best score with this graphics card and processor being 9392. And you can see the detailed monitoring right here. And with Night Raid, we got a score of 21,771, which is actually a little under the average, with the best score with this GPU and CPU being 24,421. And you can see the detailed monitoring right here. I'll begin testing in games with Halo Infinite. It's on medium settings with VSync turned off. The gameplay feels really smooth, and in my testing, the frame rate went between 41 at the lowest and 78 at the highest. For some reason, I was getting no GPU data in that overlay at the top there. I am not sure why, but I was able to get all the data in all the rest of my games. Let me know if you have any idea as to why it's not showing any data for just Halo Infinite. I'm using the Rivetuner Statistics server. So if you're familiar with that and you have experienced this yourself or know why I'm getting no data there, go ahead and let me know in the comments. In Forza Horizon 5, the benchmark mode says you'll get 71 FPS on medium settings with motion blur set to short, shadow quality set to high, night shadows off, and particle effects quality set to low. Unlike in Halo, I didn't see any screen tearing on Forza Horizon 5. It played very smooth, and in my experience really with almost any card, almost any dual width low profile card, uh, you can actually get the game to run just fine at higher settings than what the benchmark mode tells you. On high settings, I only had trouble with two cards in this game. One, the RX 6400 struggled on high settings, and the ARC A380, if you don't have resizable bar, it struggles with any settings. The 1650 is kicking butt here on medium. The A2000, I would give the nod to as performing the best in this game, I was able to just max out completely all the settings. In Starfield, I was showing a pretty low FPS in my overlay, but it actually felt smooth. This is something I've noticed before in this game. Uh, it performs at a lower frame rate than what you would like, but the game itself actually feels smooth and plays well. It doesn't seem to matter whether I'm walking around doing nothing or if there's a lot of action going on on the screen. The frame rate tends to hang out in the 30s and 40s on medium settings. As you can see, even though I'm shooting my laser thingy and there are a lot of enemies around, the frame rate is actually going up to 40 and then back down just a little bit, even though there's explosions and a ship taking off around me. Speaking of ship, it actually seems to get a little bit better frame rate when I'm up in a ship up in space. As you can see here, it stays in the 40s the entire time. My guess is that there are less lighting effects and textures on the screen because of the vastness of space and all the enemies are kind of far away. Here in just a minute though, I get closer to this enemy ship and it seems like even getting closer, the frame rate still holds above 40 FPS. So in this game, really you can't trust the frame rate being low. It still plays beautifully and um, it just shows you a weird number up in the corner. Compared to the other games I tested, this one seems to be a little bit more GPU intensive. Forza Horizon 5 was kind of a little bit more equal, and Halo, I don't know what was going on with Halo. Uh, according to Halo, I didn't even have a GPU. But this one puts more on the GPU than 